Hey guys, it's Evan Borse here, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the tests that I did with my red Scarlet W and the red Epic W that I rented. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is that these tests are um, for a very specific purpose. This is not a exhaustive comparison by any stretch of these two cameras. It's not even an overly technical comparison of these two cameras because not all things were equal. We weren't using exactly the same lenses. We weren't using exactly the same filters, but that was on purpose because I wanted to know going into this, if you could tell a significant difference between these two cameras on an average shoot. So my question as a DP really was, um, do I have any interest in upgrading to this camera? And my question then becomes, is this going to create a measurable improvement in my work? So I went out and shot some stuff with uh, Quentin Brogan and Denis Enchenko, which you can see now. And um, we just set up shots and would kind of pick off similar things. We were always at 24 millimeters. Uh, Quentin had a Sigma uh, 18 to 35 and I had a Rokin on Zine 24, but we left them both at 24. And the question was not, is there a difference, but is that difference measurable? And is that difference measurably better? So, um, you know, I'll leave it up to you to make your own decision on that as you kind of watch some of this stuff. But I feel like the difference was about what I expected it to be, um, which is part of, of what I used as my decision to not upgrade to an Epic W. Now that's not to say that there isn't a difference. If you were to take these two cameras and compare the same lenses uh, and the same different you know, situations and put different crop sizes, obviously the images are going to be different. But the question is, are they different enough for it to really matter? Now the place that I did see that difference mattering was in a low light situation where you really needed to put your exposure uh, up using your ISO, but for anyone who really knows how ISO works on RED cameras, I don't know that that's even an optimal solution because you're remapping your exposure in weird ways and doing funny things to your shadow dynamic range. So it's a good tool to have and the Epic W does it well, but I honestly don't know if it's like an optimal tool or something that I would want to use any more than absolutely necessary. It's nice to have, it's something that will make me consider renting an Epic W for certain jobs, but I chose not to buy it because of these tests. So. Let me know what you think. Can you pick them apart? If you can, which one's which? Maybe I'll post a video with the key soon. But uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting to kind of get to try these out. Thank you so much to Kern Giddens for uh, renting me his Epic W. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Uh, so if you want to rent that, you can check it out. Also, lensprotogo.com is renting them now. So if you're somewhere else in the country and want to be able to rent an Epic W, go to LensPro uh, and you can use code FBORSIER15 to get 15% off that rental. I'll put that link below as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.